30 essential Atari 8-bit vertical flying shoot 'em ups for your Atari 400 Mini coming up next. Along with horizontal shoot 'em ups and asteroid style rock pulverizers, vertical scrolling blasters are one of my favorite genres of computer games. Back in the early 1980s, we didn't have too many of these titles for our Atari 800. We had games like Activision's River Raid and Dreadnought Factor, but over the last 40 years, I've found a wealth of good fun and some great top down scrolling blasters for the Atari 8 bit computers. One genre that could fit on this list, but we'll leave for a follow-up video, are the isometric Zaxxon style shooters, as covering those would push this video much longer than most people's attention span. And yes, I look at the stats. So let's get right to it and take a look at 30 of my favorites right now, starting with a 1987 Xevious clone, of which there were quite a few on the Atari 8-bit machines. 1987's Arax by Comart Software is a German Xevious clone, but with only ground targets, where you switch your weapons between bombs and missiles with the spacebar. Astron 9, a 1982 Cosme release, is an American-made inertia-style cross between Lunar Lander and Caverns of Mars that adds a little Synapse Classic Zeppelin to the mix. Astro Droid, a 1987 Red Rat release, is a very challenging space shooter from Don Rigby, who also made the classic Screaming Wings. Atari Blast, again we've seen this in quite a few of our videos, is the Paul Lay ultimate vertical scrolling shooter in odd numbered levels and the ultimate horizontal shooter in even numbered levels. Battle Eagle is a 2013 homebrew co-signed systems release and an entry into the 2013 ABUC software contest that is a multi-path shooter and is best played with the auto fire button held down for dear life. Orion Software's 1984 Blackhawk is probably the most unique game on this list, with elements of both Blue Max and a precursor to the 16-bit title Desert Strike. Caverns of Mars 1981 Atari is one of the second wave of early killer apps for the Atari 8-bits that sold so well in the Atari program exchange that the game was released as a full retail package by Atari also.
Dark Abyss 1993 Mirage is a difficult, Polish developed, up and down, precision control shooter with an interesting color scheme. It's from the same dev team that created the good looking but ultimately too difficult to control attempt at Turrican for the 8 bits called Technus. <laughs> The Dreadnought Factor is the 1983 Activision Ultra Classic that has the player flying over huge spaceships in order to destroy them by bombing all the energy vents on each ship. A Spiel, a 1984 Tiger Vision game, is a fun, close port to the Atari 2600 game of the same name that has Xevious written all over it. Phaetum. A 1993 ASF release is a shoot everything, collect cash, buy new weapons to outfit your ship game developed by a Polish team with the absolute best name, the Mad Men Federation. Firefleet, a 1983 English software release, is a Caverns of Mars inspired, beautiful looking, and fun playing blaster that uses square particles to great effect through four very challenging sectors. Before the Xevious unreleased port was found, 1984's Flak by Sunsoft was maybe the king of Xevious clones on the Atari 8-bit. The Last Guardian, a 1988 Tynesoft release, is a Chris Murray developed, beautiful looking, but incredibly difficult ode to all things blasting over a huge dreadnought while collecting extra weapons and holding on for your dear life until you can land on the ship docking bay. Last Squadron is Seekersoft 2021 release that is the plain flying answer to the question, is there another game almost as good as Atari Blast? Night Raiders, a 1983 Datasoft game, takes the player through five levels of blasting enemy bases with a weapon that must be aimed to properly hit targets and be effective. Pathfinder is an interesting 1984 Activision game where you equip your ship with supplies and take off to explore planets filled with radiation in order to collect artifacts, time capsules, and more items to replenish your ship's supplies.
Phobos, a 1982 APX release, is Greg Christensen's rousing follow-up to Caverns of Mars that looks better and is even more challenging than its predecessor. Activision's 1982 River Raid is an upgrade over the Atari 2600 Ultra Classic that improves the graphics and adds much more danger and things to blast along the way. Screaming Wings 2020 is a Franco Catrin update to the Don Rigby classic that adds more refined graphics and sounds to what is already a must play on the Atari 8 bit. Pal Development's Sidewinder 2 is a well done but quite difficult extra weapon bolt on shooter with a lot of moving barriers to navigate, but also a shield that stops you from frustratedly being killed with a single hit. Space Ace, a 1982 London software release, is quite simple looking but has the fun blasting where it counts and is quite a gem if you play it long enough. Space Fortress Omega from 2018 by Jason Kendall is a new classic that plays a little like Caverns of Mars in reverse with even more difficult passageways to navigate than that classic. Atari UK's Speedhawk from 1988 is another in the line of well-made, fly over a mothership, blast everything while picking up extra weapon style contests to be made for the Atari computers after the XEGS was released. Starfire Warrior, a 1983 Datasoft prototype, is an excellent but unreleased Xevious or Zevious style shooter that would probably have been considered a must have classic if it had received a proper release. Thrax Lair, a 1982 Rantum title, is quite unique on this list, as you fly not as a spaceship or plane, but as a giant bird-like tarp creature that must blast bugs and get through the caves as quickly as possible. Tiger Attack 1988 by Atari UK is Atari's reasonably successful attempt to get a flying shark style game ported to the XE machines when Taito would not do it themselves.
Warhawk, the 1986 Firebird game, is a screaming, particle-emitting, wickedly fun explosion generator of a game that was absolutely the closest thing to Atari Blast on the classic 8-bit machines. War War 1, a 1983 Rockland title, is a simple but fun update to a pretty good Atari 2600 game that may not look as good as a game like Warhawk, but will keep your finger on the trigger button and your mind on just one more try. Xevious 1984 Atari was originally an Atari 5200 port that was not released. And while the main guns are just a single player instead of two missiles, all in all, it's a must play for your Atari 8-bit or Atari 400 Mini. Wow, that's all for this time. There are more vertical shooters, especially the Zaxxon and Blue Max style ones for the Atari 8-bits, and we'll cover those in a further video. Okay, until next time, have fun blasting and scrolling and scrolling and blasting on the machine of your choice in the vertical blank. We were children of the Silicon Revolution, an X generation conscripted to fight the console and home computer wars. A product of an analog 70s childhood, we came of digital age in the 80s, believing we could affect the world 8 bits at a time. Armed with joysticks, full stroke keyboards, jolt cola, and MTV haircuts, we proceeded into the vertical blank. There we stayed up late at night, devising incantations from D&D rulebooks and beginners all-purpose symbolic instruction code. Video games were the match, and programming was the fuse, as the infinite possibilities of the digital world exploded into the internet age to come. We are Generation Atari. Into the vertical blank. We are the forgotten generation, a misplaced slice of the 20th century when birth rates were as low as expectations for the future. We lived under the threat of constant nuclear annihilation, playing outside, but always inherently knowing the future was indoors. We are the second half of Generation X. We were some of the first to play video games, to program home computers, and record CDs to cassette mixtapes. Our generation was nourished by New Wave, Imperfect Punk Rock, and John Hughes movies. We built Web 1.0 from the ground up using our childhood 8-bit and 16-bit programming skills. They call us Gen X. We prefer the vertical blank generation, where magic happens between the lines because that's where we live, love, and thrive. We are Generation Atari. Into the vertical blank. The vertical blank is the space between the last line of the current frame and the first line of the next, where off-screen calculations create a cathode ray tube display. Exists literally between the lines invisible yet all seen in a void where magic occurs that is never seen only experience the vertical blank is an omniscient force containing the nuances that make our nostalgia a reality it's the transcendental location that holds our best memories biggest joys greatest fears and our most terrible losses 
you've been warned. You can stop this tape now, turn around. For once you've entered their main no escape. All the scan lines have been written. It's time to enter the vertical blank. Into the vertical blank. Next brain calculated. Prepare to write new data. Any blank ending 